Yo, what up, everybody? It's your boy, Yellow Snowman, getting back up in the games, playing some more Soccer Spirit on the channel today. With this image being the first image you see, for sure, definitely a, a good video here, clean video, definitely safe for work. And uh, today, we're going to figure out what exactly happens to Takahiro Kun, because he's, <laughs> he's about to lift the blanket, so she's probably about to get upset with something or another. So, let's figure out what's going down, boys. Stop. Yep, that's, that's about exactly what I expected. Yikes! Uh... I don't want any blackberries. Oh, shoot. Why does the very sheets I was lying on, my heart pounded louder than ever. Without a word, I dropped the blanket. She was still dreaming, mumbling away in her sleep, but she had scared the living daylights out of me. Okay, alright. <laughs> okay. After a while, Maiko returned and deposited my now dry clothes in my lap. She smiled at me and lingered for a few moments as if expecting me to begin changing. Oh, of, of course, this will, uh, I'll go get it now, but don't change too quickly, okay? Just a, a bit, a, a slowly, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do. I bet you'd hate me for, I, I, I bet you wait for me to sneak, sneak in a peek, you know what I'm saying? Haha, <laughs> get a little bit of that way! <laughs> don't think guys spend as much time changing as girls, wait. Were you planning to peek on me? I occurred to me that perhaps Maiko was more like her sister than I had first assumed. I'm kind of curious about the difference between those foxes in your hand and the lake. No, oh, amazing! I always kind to the water and that becomes your hand. Uh, actually, <laughs> I think it's probably because I'm a guy. We tend to be stronger than girls, not to mention I practice judo. <laughs> not to mention I practice judo almost every day. It would be embarrassing if I couldn't even carry a girl. Judo. J U D O. Judo. It's a sport of sorts, although it's also used for self-defense. So I you saved me because of this? Well, that's not really it. Ultimately, saving a damsel in distress hinges on a man's pride. Oh, can I see? Your pride? Is dick. You know what I'm saying? It's dick. And just, and just what exactly are you looking for, little sister? Oh, thank goodness. Get that image off my screen. Any little guy who wasn't your wrong after super. I need to tend to it, Daddy. The younger sister scrambled to her feet and dashed out of the room at full speed, her tail comically hanging between her legs as she did. Comically. I turned to Machiko with a faint blush on my face, averting my eyes so she could pull the sheet back up around herself. Ah, uh, I see you're finally awake, Machiko-san. With you to making such a mess of a chudo and so how could I possibly hope to get any sleep and I'm glad that you just see that you are well, Kusaka Kun. Forgive me for taking such measures, but I feared that I wasn't getting warm fast enough and did what I thought was necessary. Yeah, at least it was more enjoyable sleep than you would have had in the cell. I doubt the senior return, was it? I doubt you would have given me the same service. I. <laughs> Let's just say that the hospitality was much uh, appreciated. I'm glad to hear that if you would like to change there is a screen just over there, I promise I won't look up. Of course. Uh, I guess one of us has to do it. I watched Machiko close her eyes, hiding the face in her hands as if to reassure me that she wouldn't peek. Taking my chances, I climbed out from under the blanket made my way toward the wooden screen. Once I reached it, I quickly began changing. 
If you could be so kind as to give me a favor, Dagaku, my room should be the dresser upon the dresser behind you. Could you pass them to me, please? I would spend matters of greatly. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, sure. Give me a second. After looking around for a moment, I found the robes neatly folded up on the dresser, my heart skipping a beat as I took a hold of them before turning toward the screen to hand them over. Say, Magical goes, huh? How come you two walk around stealing people's underwear? I mean, <laughs> you couldn't, you don't, you don't look like bad people to me. Well, it is complicated. Michael was researching the spell she had wanted to perform, one that would allow us easier access to certain things we need, and one of the ingredients was a maiden silk. The only silk I could think of was, well, you already know the answer. By maiden silk, you mean, ah, 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 I guess I understand why you would think that, but isn't maiden silk another term for a wedding sash? It is in my world, at least. As I said this, the girl appeared from the other side of the screen. Oh! oh I never realized. What the hell mean? A maiden silk? It's a wedding sash, uh, it goes for naught. Oh, none of you just understood what I just said. <laughs> What's after marriage, Akakun? Let's do it. But... Just a few minutes later, not too many, not too little, not too much, but just a few. Oh, here we are. The kitchen. After that little incident, we relocated to the kitchen. The smell of food filled the air. Despite the younger girl's easygoing attitude, always humming some cheerful melody, I found my cheeks still burning from embarrassment. I think that a girl would say such a thing. I quickly shook my head to clear thoughts from my mind and turned towards the elder sister. The soup is delicious. Is Michael Chan usually the one doing the cooking around here? Hey, I'm really like it. So, I usually I don't usually cook, so I'm here to fill up gases. It is really delicious, Michael Chan. Perhaps you could do more cooking for now and it'll allow me more time to lounge around. Well, the first step to getting your wedding sash is to become a good housewife, and that includes cook. Oh shoot. Could that have possibly been sexist? Oh, I'm gonna skip over that one. I added this with a bit of amusement following Machiko's comment. I took another sip of the soup. For a few lucky guesses, this addition turned out pretty well. <laughs> yeah, that one hurt. I'm gonna clean and I'll cook for you and uh, I don't know what else, but it'll be fun learning. I just thought that you know very well that it would be pointless for you to marry him. Only the villagers know how to craft a wedding sash, and we both know this will not happen. Hmm. That's not necessarily true, Machika Sam. <laughs> it only becomes a, it only becomes ever more important that you are not of this point, Takagoon. The villagers do not tolerate our existence. They despise us. We would never ask such a favor of them. All we have to do is find some way to make the villagers accept you. But I guess I'll need to learn more about the village itself before we can do that. The pale-haired woman shook her head slowly, her ears flattening against her head as she did. It's not that simple. They would never trust us. Humans and fox spirits have never been able to get along. I am honestly surprised that you have been able to tolerate us this long. I would be happy to be proven wrong, and you are free to stay here as long as you wish, uh, until, of course, you, too, grow weary of our ways and decide to leave. Please don't, please don't say things like that, talking hero. I don't do that. Why do you talk a hero? Of course not. I wouldn't abandon someone just because they're a little different. That's not the way of Kushikata our hero does things. However, I do remember the village elder telling me that it wasn't just the fox spirits. It sounded like humans and spirits everywhere had been on bad terms for a long time. You know why, Machika Sam? I don't know, recall much information is well with someone as much as myself. But most of my most of my just keep to themselves these days. There is only a few spectres just here and being one of them. Powerful spirits come and go as they please, but they tend to remain in the world. Fox spirits, however, have no other place to go. We are stuck in the human world for better or for worse. Huh? I didn't realize it was like that. I guess I'm finally learning stuff. Well, this Tsuyeri character lives in the shrine, right? We should we should try asking her for some ideas. Ah, uh, no, 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 We do not need to go see her, absolutely not. No, no, I don't know to see her, and I don't wanna. I was somewhat taken aback by Machiko's suddenly childish way of speaking. It reminded me of the times I 
been told to go visit a doctor when I was younger, complaining and throwing tantrums along the way. But isn't she the only one that can help us? Yeah, the guts Yuri is a friend and I dislike the idea of spending even a second in her present. She can't be that bad, can she? Besides, if anything happens, I'll protect you. For the latter, if I thought I did, if 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 it really means that much to you, I will attempt to lead you to the shrine again, but you will never enter the grounds alone. <gasps> I don't want to go anywhere near this place. You'll be on your own, Tucker Can. Can I come on his armor? Fine, I'll stay here. I'll just like you said, I'll be here and then I'll be here. Absolutely not, I forbid you are the most. You're not supposed to have when you die under that circumstance, Mark. Since I. Fine, I'll just stay here. Just like you said, I'll be here in the mansion. Hold on and protect it all by myself. I don't know why I happened to me and I could talk it all before I get dropped in the bookcase or die and die and on or slip on a banana peel and die or get bored and die of boredom and I'll be so super duper bored with that sitting here all alone in the same place day in and day out. Five 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 there's a little backstory of what happened between the last episode and this episode. Machiko... A rock was thrown at her face. Real hard. You know what I'm saying? She's just... just she has the biggest stutter now. It's just, it's just a huge stutter. Just a little bit of a backstory from the last episode of this story. This episode right here. You know what I'm saying? So so you guys understand why she now has a lisp. By lisp, I mean hardcore stutter. And Mayako also just went through puberty. So, she's got a little bit of a deeper voice now, too. So, okay. Despite Mayako's cheerfulness, I couldn't help but wonder what had happened between Machiko and this scary for her to react so strongly. I decided that maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to spend some time with the two sisters to get to know them a little bit, bit a little bit better. Well, I do have two weeks until I need to get back to my own world, so there's really no need to rush. How about we do something else instead? I'm sure Machika-san wouldn't mind the distraction. Well, the longer I get to stay here away from that place, the better. How about bringing much goodbye, go sound about the ride along to go fetch some dessert first? Or oranges, apples, and small volume behind the mansion. I can whip up, 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 she had something on her mind. I wanted to ask her about it, but something about the way her ears sagged and her tail hung low told me that it probably wasn't the best idea. I decided to simply try to cheer her up. So which do you prefer, my Kachan? Apples, grapes, or oranges? We could gather all three, but I bet we can grab a few for ourselves first. Um, apples, I guess. I knew a fox spirit once. A friend of Oisama who loved apples. I can't remember her name, though. I guess he, my head's a bit hollow. Apples are awesome. Crunchy on the outside, sweet on the inside, and your head isn't hollow, silly. <laughs> if that was true, I think I'd still be stuck in that jail cell. Oisama did most of the thinking, though. I just sort of went along with what she said. Well, someone has to take the lead, besides. <laughs> I'm still grateful for your help all the same. How about... I playfully flick Michael's forehead with a grin. See? It doesn't sound hollow at all. I'm sure there's plenty of clever thoughts in that pretty little head of yours. Oh, Mimi! 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 Now you know I'm right at least. Anyway. Let me flick you seven more times see how I feel about that. Anyway, let's go... Let's, let's get those apples, shall we? Okay. I'll get them. I'll get them. You go. You go grab the. You go grab the basket. Oh, she's not supposed to have a stutter. That was. She must have just had a little hiccup in her speaking. Not me at all. Not my fault. All right. Let's get. Let's get down to business. Yeah. Woo. Did did. Feeling hyped, man. Yeah. I went to grab one of the baskets stacked nearby and returned to my goes. Start climbing one of the trees. Yeah. Get hyped. 
The girl looked accustomed to climbing, but her small hands had me a bit worried from the branch with just her legs. She checked to see if the apples were ripe. Michael Chan, be careful! You might slip out! The girl had thrown an apple at me, and while my reflexes let me catch it with ease, the force behind it still stung my palm a little. Of course, I did exaggerate a bit for the girl. Haha, <laughs> I'll be fine talking, I've been climbing these trees all my life. Even the most experienced climbers end up running into trouble if they aren't careful. I smiled weakly at the girl's excited attitude, placing the apple I caught into the basket. You don't know what you're talking about, I'm a fox spirit, I won't fall, I'm super careful, watch. I'll grab the apples near the top. <laughs> Bye! Uh, 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 wait, wait, my, my, my katan, uh, unless you can fly, uh, I don't think you should go for those. Fine, I can't do that, silly tag, eh, eh, Who's ever heard of a flying fox berry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As expected. The moment Michael tried to reach for one of the apples near the top of the tree, the girl ended up losing her footing and tumbled down towards the ground with a loud cry. Michael! My reflexes quickly kicked themselves into gear trying to catch the girl before she hit the ground. Unfortunately, I didn't know the, as the apples scattered around the tree. As a result, I ended up tripping over them. I managed a few other steps. I was able to catch Michael before I dropped to the ground. Yeah, yeah, boy! My head was throbbing once I recovered from the fall. I tried to sit up, but found myself held down by a small but substantial weight. <coughs> Opening my eyes, I looked up to see Mike was sitting on my lap. I guess I tried to reach a bit too far. Thank you, Talkie Hero. You saved me and you gave me a soft well. Kinda soft and kinda hard landing. <laughs> He's got a boner. He's got a boner. Michael John, do you mind? You're uh getting me hard as a rock. What? Oh my God, Tucker, okay, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. As the younger girl grew increasingly flustered, I knew I had to calm her down gently. I tilted my legs beneath her. Stung my dick in her no, I'm just, and she toppled forward, her head resting against my dick hole. I guess you've learned that the fox spirits can be pretty clumsy, or maybe the Michael is even cuter up close than I had thought. What? Ah, uh, I think you're mistaking me for any song. Nope, I'm talking about you. You have that innocent side to you that's really charming. I wouldn't be surprised if lots of people from the village would want to claim you as their adorable little sister once we've cleared up those misunderstandings. <laughs> I'd be happy to call you my brother, Takahiro, but lots of people in that village are super me. This one is better with you guys and don't need someone. But, 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 brother. How about. Darling. Who wants to be called Darling? Not me. That's for certain. I'm about to be called Darling. Da da da, Darling. I, 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 I don't know if I'm ready for that. Really? I think we'd be a super cute couple. Here on a fox spirit living happily ever after. That after, your sister could stay too. We could raise a little family. I mean, we already have a house, so we wouldn't need to worry about that. And any guy from my world would kill to have a pretty wife like you. Okay, like seriously. <laughs> I held back a chuckle. Okay, yeah. I held back a chuckle, knowing all too well that my teasing was taking effect. And yet, I was also happy to see her spirit seemingly lifted. <laughs> Thank you, Tan Taka Ni. Uh oh, upgrade. Getting ourselves upgraded. I think Taka Kun would be better. Machika san probably wouldn't like another sibling. But I'm glad you cheered up. <laughs> Taka ni. See, I was talking about us being a couple, not a brother and sister, so. No, I don't want you calling me Taka ni. Okay? Because if we're finna be together, you're not calling me no freaking brother, dog. <laughs> you ain't touching that brother subject. You didn't seem to happy earlier. The way your tail and ears are hanging on reminded me of a scolded puppy. Huh? Alright, I was just thinking, as all, you know, about, about that spell I wanted to try. The one that can get the silky wedding undies. Wedding sash. Uh, 
It's kind of like a belt that the bride wears during the wedding ceremony. I doubt any spell involving pennies would be a good idea to cast. Oh, I thought it was like wedding undies that you wear on your wedding night. No, those are just called undies. Anyway, spell. Uh, I don't know why, but I wanted to try it for a little while now, and well, it's Kate's spell, not like those temporary ones. Those are easy to make. A permanent one, like a portal to a different place. Hmm. Sounds interesting, but are you sure it's safe? Skish, skish. Silly guy, Takani. Stop calling me Takani. You know we're not doing that. That's not the point. This spell it might be able to help you. Well, that's good and all. I prefer not ending up in the middle of a sea or a live volcano. I think you should be a bit more careful with your magic. <laughs> That's what Harry said when he told Atlantis he had a solution to their water shortage. Was that a... Was that a roast right there? Just a little jab? Just getting in there a little bit? Deepening the wound? Huh? What's an Atlantis? A city with high ambitions sunk into the deep due to poor management. And, uh, anyway, I think it's best to get an expert's opinion before we try anything. We're going to visit this Shiuri anyway, so maybe she'll be able to tell us if your spell will get me home. Oh, but such a me. I shouldn't use magic at all. She said it was only for her to use or something. Hmm, maybe she had a reason for saying that. Like, maybe, I don't know. Do spells have side effects? No, <laughs> from, um... It's just like Onisama. She forbid me too, but I showed her that spells could be helpful and that I can't control them, so she let me do more research. I'm not going to throw spells around like they're nothing. I'm not a dumb little kid. I'm not going to do anything. Besides, you seem old enough to take care of yourself. Not that I know how old someone like you might be, but... <clears throat> yeah, he, he's slowly going. Is she even of age right now, dude? <laughs> Beware of the dark side of magic. In most stories, magic usually comes with a price, like... What would you do if magic gave you a terrible tummy ache, or headaches, or worse? <laughs> then you better prepare a gate spell to the nearest bathroom. I don't get headaches, but those aren't really all that big of a deal. I can just do a lot of things for one, I'm not. I'm going to change that ever so there. I'm not going to change that ever so there. I already said I wasn't going to make you do anything. However, what you do need to change is the fact that you're straddling me and, uh... <laughs> you're rather close, so... I'd appreciate it if you would, uh... Get up off that dick. Aw, oh, but you're so warm and hard. I could just curl up and sleep on you. <laughs> Whoa, hold on, back it up. Don't don't go falling asleep on me, dog. Yeah. Just kidding. I wouldn't do something like that out here. Maybe tonight, though. <laughs> it's only fair since only Sama got to do it, but more importantly, dessert! I need to get back inside. Only someone's probably wondering what's taking so long. Yeah, get off me. I couldn't really argue with the girl's impeccable logic. With a smile, I helped the girl to her feet. Wait. You helped her to her feet? She was on top of you, bro. Wouldn't she be the first one to get up? Also, gathered the few fallen apples in the basket. We returned to Machiko and enjoyed our dessert together. It wasn't too long after that that Mayako started to feel sleepy, so Machiko took her to bed, wishing me a good night. The next morning. I woke the next morning to the sun filtering in through the wooden blinds, yawning loudly. The girls had very graciously given me an entire room to myself, and it was certainly a lot bigger than my room back home. Is that my bed? Right, Dar? It was still early in the morning, likely a bit for breakfast. A bit before breakfast. I decided to spend a short moment to gather my thoughts. It was clear that in order to learn more about my situation, I would need to pay a visit to the shrine. 
Maybe I could even find the answers to some of the other questions that have been lingering in the back of my mind for a while now. The fact that Machiko seems surprisingly nervous at the mention of Sierra's name made me wonder about their relationship. What could possibly have happened to make Machiko react like that? The apparent hostility between the villagers and the fox spirits was another issue altogether. 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 Of course, I couldn't forget about the fact that I needed to find a way to get home as well. Just as I finished gathering my thoughts, Michael's voice resounded from the downstairs. Oh, this is a multi-story building, huh? Talking in your breakfast is ready. Good to go get some stomach. Sure. Dog. I'll be right there. I quickly made my way out of the room, finding myself within one of the corridors of the mansion. Yo, new image. Once outside, it didn't take long for me to find Machiko wandering down the corridor, her lips curving into a smile when she saw me. Nothing like for me talking, Machiko's voice reached me long corner. Good morning, Machiko-san. Did you sleep well? Does a decent sleep will never have a bit lonely, however. You seem to be getting along with my old mother, with my mother, Was it perhaps I should consider you my rival in the quest for the heart of our dear mother? <clears throat> Alright. There's not really a rival going on. You know what I'm saying? There's, there's not really a rival going on. It's, a, it's exclusively, I'm not her brother. Okay. Do not call me her brother. And you should not be fighting. Okay, do you understand what I'm saying here? Do you understand what I'm saying here? <laughs> she seems to like it. I guess I'll be stuck with that name for a while. What was it not to your liking? Well, perhaps you would prefer Darling and... Oh, my... You were watching us? Um, indeed. <laughs> it's taking you both such a long time. I'd be rather curious and snug out. Okay. Prensero! <clears throat> Whoa. But I didn't see you at all. Well, I am a fucking spirit. I think myself from humans is like playing hide and seek with a child. And why didn't you use your hiding skills to hide from the guards? I think you mentioned it. I never thought it never thought never occurred to me. Oh, well, it certainly was fun getting chased by now. Unfortunately, my ego doesn't have the best control of the but I have to have the best control over ch change and siege. They're hard to incredible. And is unable to maintain the illusion. It is one of her magical blind spots. I'm sure it wouldn't have been fun if the Sundari Tyrant had caught you both. That certainly would have been an unpleasant event. And again, I'm sure you would have ended up saving me, wouldn't you, Dr. Kid? I noticed a subtle change in Machiko's voice as the sweet, sugar-coated words caused my cheeks to flush red. I really wasn't any good at dealing with this girl's flirty attitude. Stepping backward, I turned toward the stairs at the end of the corridor and replied in a hurried tone. My mic John is waiting for us. And with that, I rushed towards the kitchen, and Machiko giggling beside me, behind me, as she followed. Huh. Good morning, buddy. Yeah, I fixed up some eggs and toast for you. There are some oranges, juice. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, little one there. You are getting better at this to wake up. Uh, knowing a pretty girl made me breakfast, it's good to be alive. And that's the end of this episode, everybody. It is good to be alive. Okay. So, uh, in the next episode, we're gonna, I don't know, go to the shrine, maybe. Try to find Sayuri. And, uh, make sure you guys leave a like on the video if you, uh, enjoy this series. Subscribe if you want some more Sakura videos posted. And, uh, comment on what you guys want to see happen next and how you guys are liking it. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Deuces.